Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, I want to start this video off by saying thank you very much to all of you. I put up that video yesterday about me just taking a short trip to Costco to buy stuff. And a lot of you were concerned that I wasn't wearing a mask and that I was even out with everything that's going on. And I just want to say thank you very much for being concerned. I truly do appreciate all of the comments that you guys left in reference to that. But let me just let you guys know that right now, where I live, there are some confirmed cases. I think the last I checked was nine, which in my opinion is a lot. Uh, but I wasn't really thinking about it. And, you know, I'm glad that I put that video up. And I'm sorry for the quality of the video, ladies and gentlemen, you know. But I'm glad I put that video up because you guys woke me up to the fact that I need to be more careful. And that I really need to think about things before I do them. I should not have gone to the store. Now, the things that I got were things that we wanted, not things that we needed. So for those of you that said something about, you know, maybe you shouldn't be out, you, um, uh, you should be wearing a mask and things like that, I want to thank you for that. I really do. And, you know, one of the things that's important is that you have to be able to admit when you're wrong. And when you do things that maybe you shouldn't have done. And something as elementary as going to the store in times like this that we're living through can be pretty dangerous. So I just wanted to go ahead and say thank you very much to those of you that showed concern over that. And I am going to take your advice. From now on, I'm only going to go out to do things that I have to do, like to get a load of water. That's not, there's no way I can get around that because I don't have a well. But there truly is no need for us to be out in public if we don't absolutely have to. All right. So thank you very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. I truly appreciate you guys coming on there and saying that because if you hadn't said something, I probably wouldn't have, probably would not be having second thoughts on whether I should be doing that again. I probably would have just gone back out, right? And uh, done, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but... It could be the wrong thing if things work out bad, right? So anyways, thank you very much. I truly do appreciate you guys. And I, I, I really appreciate that you care enough to put it out there. Hello, YouTubers. Alaska Prepper here. I'm about to head out and do some shores. So I thought that during the drive, we can have a talk and maybe a small thought experiment. What do you think the next six months to a year will look like, considering everything that's been going on and that is going on right now? But first, I'd like to show you what some may call a winter wonderland. <sighs> I don't really want to call it that. It's just a lot of work. We got dumped on yesterday. We must have gotten at least a good 12 inches of snow. And that's what my backyard looks like. Remember that trailer you guys see on my last few videos? That's what it looks like. I'm going to bring you closer so you can see. I spent about three hours yesterday doing my driveway and working with my neighbor to clear off our road. And as you can see, the snow blower right there, we got about half that much snow yesterday. Snow is about two feet up right there. This is what my back looks like. The trailer is about half the way up, buried in snow. And my little tents have been holding up really well. There's one of the tents right there. That's the one where I have my fuel storage. And look at this tent. This is like an igloo. This tent is completely engulfed in snow. Thank goodness we only have, supposedly, about another... I would say six inches of snow before the end of the snow season is over, before it stops snowing. It seems like this year is going to be a cooler year, meaning that normally by about the end of April, just about all of the snow has melted. But I was looking at the extended forecast and it's showing that by the middle of April, we're still going to be below freezing. 
which tells me that this snow season is going to carry us over into May. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> what you see there, ladies and gentlemen, that looks like an igloo, is that Shelter Lodge tent. It's one of the ones that's like tan. And this is going to be me and Little Miss Alaska Prepper's project for today, is to unbury that, that tent. Now, the top of it only has about, I would say, probably nine inches of snow on it because it does have some cover from the trees that are around it. But the sides are pretty much all the way up to the top with snow, which isn't really that dangerous because gravity makes weight go straight down, not at an angle. So, but we're going to unload that today. As you can see, this used to be down to the ground before yesterday. And it is again today after I dug it out. But that's about how much snow we've gotten since the last time I dug this out, which was about a month ago. So we've probably gotten about a foot and a half, almost two feet of snow in the last month. So we've gotten a good amount of snow. And here's what the, <laughs> that's what the back side of my house looks like. Let's go ahead and take you to the front side. And I mean, and look at this, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful day today. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. Could it ask for it to be nicer? And it's not bad outside, it's only about 20 degrees. I'll show you what the front of my house looks like with all the snow on the roof. But if you can see that right there, that has not been cleared off since the beginning of winter. And that's probably about, I wanna say, two and a half to three feet thick. But you have to remember that as winter goes, that the snow compresses. So I'm saying that this year so far, we've probably had anywhere between five and a half to six feet of snow. And this is what the front of my house looks like. Look at the roof. <laughs> These are my side ends or my side wings. Yeah, I, I put that plastic up during winter to keep snow from coming onto the deck or the front porch. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are completely Done with snow this year. We can't wait for it to end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the road that I was working on yesterday, my neighbor and I. My neighbor got himself a little four-wheeler that accepts a small plow, but it doesn't do a great job when it's a lot of snow. So what he was doing is, and that's it right there under that blue tarp. What he was doing is he was plowing all the snow that he could down to the bottom of my road where we have a cul-de-sac and then I was coming up behind him and cleaning it up and it worked out really well we were out here for about two hours doing this road between me and him and then I was out on my property doing my driveway and some of the back that I showed you earlier with my snow blower and my shovel and as you can see I still have more to go but getting to the subject of the day ladies and gentlemen after seeing everything that you've seen, as far as what's happened and what's happening currently, what do you think the world, or even our country, will look like in the next six months to a year? I have some mixed feelings about what's going to happen within the next six months to a year, but I also believe that some good will come out of the chaos. So for example, what's one of the good things that can come out of crises? And one of the good things I feel is that the family unit will become a little more tight, right? Families are gonna start spending more time together because they don't really have a choice and they're gonna rediscover the wonder of spending time with family. For example, yesterday, after I came in from snow blowing, my wife and my daughter were giving each other manis, you know, their manicures. They were giving each other manicures in the living room. And that's something that I haven't seen for a long time. Usually they'll go out as a couple, you know, as mother and daughter couple, they'll go out and get a manicure, you know, out in town. It's one of the things that they do, which is, you know, fine with me. But yesterday instead, they were there, you know, spending time with each other instead of being on the phone or the computer, and they were giving each other manicures. Uh, 
another thing, more home cooked meals. More time to actually prepare a meal for your family or with your family, right? So I think that in the end, once we get over to whatever side it is that we're going to end up with for the next few generations, I think that we will have a more tight-knit family unit, which is a good thing. However, before that happens, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we will be in for some tough times. And before I say what I'm gonna say now, let me tell you that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pathologist. You all know who have been here long enough. I am a proud graduate of a two-year degree in general education. So I have an associate's degree in general education. All right, ladies and gentlemen, which has served me very well, by the way. I would like to say that. So what I'm gonna say now is 100% speculative, and it's just what I think from reading things that have happened in the past. So once this health thing that's going around goes away, because eventually it will, right? Once it goes away, everyone's gonna be saying, man, that burned off, we're good to go, yay, everything's great again, the economy's gonna get started back up again, you know, the, the Dow, the stock market is gonna just zoom, shoot up in the air, and it's gonna be back to good times, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, from reading of past health issues like this in the world, you know, in the past centuries, there's always been like a second and third wave. Now remember, I'm not a pessimistic person, but I am a realist and I like to see what's in front of me so that I can prepare for it. So what I'm thinking is that, not being a doctor or anything like that, what I'm thinking is that once this first wave has gone and we're back to good times, I think that a second wave is gonna hit us and it's going to be 10 times worse than the first. Just like it's happened before. It's gonna be a multitude of times worse than the first. And that is when we will have our real, true economic collapse. Because I think that it'll probably happen sometime into the fall or the winter of this year. Now, that's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot to take in. But that's just me thinking out loud, ladies and gentlemen. So when I do videos and I say, you need to prepare for the things that you're going to need six months from now, a year from now. Maybe those people that were buying an overabundance of toilet paper, maybe they know something that we don't know. So what do you guys think? Leave in the comments. What do you think is going to come of this? Of the health situation that we have going on right now? Of the financial situation that is being blamed on that health situation? Which anyone that's in the know knows that that's not the case. That the economy wasn't really doing as great before this all started unraveling. And if it was doing great, ladies and gentlemen, if the economy was doing great, then how in the world is it that if you have to shut down for two weeks or a month that you're already bankrupt? Think, think for yourselves. How many times have you heard a financial advisor, even on mainstream media nonetheless, get on there and say, you know, the average household or family should have anywhere between three to six months worth of expenses in case a life-changing event occurs well they're putting it out there for the average family to do it you would think that a multi-billion dollar or multi-million dollar corporation would have the sense of following the same guidance but as you can see that in the last few weeks you could see with your eyes how vulnerable our economy really is. That there's really not too much holding it up. That without credit, there's really nothing. Because they rely on credit so much in order to conduct business. 
another one of the reasons why I'm gonna go ahead and stop off at the ATM as well <laughs> and get some cash out so you see ladies and gentlemen this economy was failing way before all this happened now in the last two or three days I'm not sure I didn't look to see where it was yesterday what I closed at yesterday but I know that in the last two or three days or so the stock market has been just rocketing up incredible especially that one day where it got like 2300 points to the upside incredible ladies and gentlemen but guess what everyone knows everyone knows now that watch they know now how fake the stock market is now they know how fake the stock market is you know why because now they have the time people that are staying home now because they're because they have to stay home what do you think they're doing yes they're spending that time with their families but I have a feeling that what they're doing is is they're educating themselves because they're probably some of those people that couldn't get a pack of toilet paper or a pack of water and now they're like stuck at home wondering man am I gonna have enough toilet paper or water to get through this thing and they're gonna get on the computer and say why don't I have enough toilet paper or water and yeah they're gonna see a few articles that mentions that yeah people are hoarding and this and this and that but they're gonna look into it they are now being allowed the time to look into why this is occurring and why they can't get their toilet paper and I have a feeling that a lot of people are gonna wake up and now that they see the stock market just rocketing they're asking themselves how can these companies be doing so well you know when Boeing had to cancel orders and sales of those uh, airplanes that kept going down that kept dropping out of the sky I think it's the 737 or something like that they are just done Boeing is done but our grateful government or our great government sent Boeing or is sending Boeing a bailout package you see ladies and gentlemen when the when the big corporations fail you and I get to bail them out but when you and I fail there's nobody here to bail us out when's the last time that you had a neighbor that was getting foreclosed on and the government came in and said hey I'm gonna bail you out I'm gonna pay off the rest of your mortgage when's the last time that you heard of that happening So that's what I think is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, in the next six months. We are going to be, if not just about out, we will be out of most of the consumer items that we've become accustomed to. You know, things that are imported. We are going to be out of those things. We are going to be short on a lot of staple food items because of the weather patterns that we have been experiencing here in the US and in the country for the last few years don't know if you know this or not but there's a lot of farms down south down on the lower 48 that should be starting to plant but aren't because they either don't have the help or because they don't have the capacity as far as their ground being too wet to be worked on or to be planted so their grounds their land doesn't have the capacity to carry a seed right now because if not it'll just die or the ground is just so wet that their machinery cannot drive on it so I say that in the next six months to a year we will be having major food shortages I would say that there will be rationing so we're gonna be having shortages on staples meat is going to be very expensive and I think the reason we won't have shortages on meat is because it's going to be so expensive and that's not taking into consideration the symptoms of the inflation that is being pumped into the market and into the economy right now that's not taking those things into into account I'm talking about that prices will be high just on a supply and demand scenario to that we would have to add 
the elevation in prices due to all of the inflation that the Federal Reserve is pumping into the markets and the economy right now. So like I said before, if you're getting your $1,000, $1,200, whatever it is, be smart with it. Be smart with it. If it were me, I would spend it as soon as I can. That way I can get most of the purchasing power out of it that it has. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting up to my uh, transfer station right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and log off, go throw this garbage away and do a few shores. I have to get a, a few loads of water today since I haven't left the house in about the last five or six days. Uh, we're running low on water, so I'm gonna do a couple of hauls of water, and then I'm gonna go out later on this afternoon with Little Miss Alaska Prepper, and I'm gonna take care of the rest of that snow work that we need to take care of. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm over here. Let me go ahead and get out of my truck here. I hope you guys have a great day today. Thank you very much again for joining in. All right, so remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I am out.